All right, we will get started now. Um, it looks like we have about 150, 56 people <laughs> that are on board here this morning. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Cynthia Brown. I'm with Museum EXP, and I'm also on the board for the Traveling Exhibit Network. And we are proud to have you guys here with us today. And we are very excited to be collaborating with Mac West, who is on the line here with us um, from Informal Learning Experiences. Um, so for those of you who are missing Mac's buzzer and seeing all of our friends at the American Alliance of Museums annual conference, um, we hope that this is a, a, a good enough substitute. <laughs> So with that, um, we have a, a really great full hour here for you today. So we're gonna start um, moving along. And I would love to introduce you to uh, Mr. Mac West. Well, actually, sorry. First, I'm gonna introduce you to my board. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone should be on the on the board or on the call here today. Um, first off, I have Heather Farnworth um, with Ontario Science Center. Heather, if you can say hi. Um, we have uh, AJ Gailey with Lucy Creative. AJ, you can hi say everyone. <laughs> we have uh, Debbie Donahue with Imagine Exhibitions. Morning. We have Shane McConnell with Little Ray's Nature Centers. Hi. Uh, myself, Cynthia Brown with Museum EXP, good morning, um, and Sarah Myers with the Children's Museum of Indianapolis. Good morning. Looks like she has her friends behind her. <laughs> yeah. um, so with that, I am proud to introduce Mac. Um, Mac, are you there? Yes, I am here. Excellent. Um, so Mac, if you could give us just a little background on uh, the ILE Roundtable and uh, just a few ground rules for everyone. Okay, well, uh, Informal Learning has, has been hosting the Traveling Exhibits Forum at AAM and Aztec conferences for quite a number of years. Uh, as the years have passed, we have gotten more and more professional at doing it. And uh, actually today we have uh, extended ourselves into the, the realm of technology in ways that we generally don't do. But the, the premise that we have is that uh, there are opportunities for people to exchange ideas, for venues to seek exhibits, for vendors to find places to place their exhibits, and for ideas for new exhibits, new topics, new approaches to be brought forth to the larger community. And <clears throat> the process that we use is what we're going to be doing here today is that there are two minutes uh, unlike our, our AAM and Aztec presentations there are now visuals that uh, when we're at the conferences we are verbal only but uh, Cynthia will be very careful to make sure that uh, your pictures are up and they're then they go away in a timely way and I will make sure that uh, you are aware of your two minute limit for your presentation as uh, I have my, my uh, faithful climbing, uh, ti timing apparatus set up on my phone here and at two minutes it's going to ding and that means that you just got dinged. So I think we can get going. Cynthia, should we just start the, uh, going through the list? Absolutely. Um, so for those of you that, that are presenting, um, you can unmute yourself if you're in a quiet background um, when you are considered on deck. Um, I do just want to quickly mention that we unfortunately are not going to have any time for questions, but feel free to type any questions that you have about the exhibits that are being presented in the, the group chat. And I'm sure that any of the presenters after they're completed um, will uh, be more than happy to answer any of your questions or take them offline. All right, so first up here. First is Sarah Myers. Yeah. Good and morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. I am super excited today to announce our newest traveling exhibit, Barbie, You Can Be Anything, The Experience. Starting at age five, girls stop believing that they can be anything. This is called the Dream Gap, and TCM is proud to partner once again with Mattel to help close this gap. Barbie, You Can Be Anything, The Experience will showcase the iconic Barbie doll and encourage the kind of imaginative play that teaches us no matter our gender, ethnicity, or background, we all can make the world a better place by doing work that excites us, 
challenges us, and brings us fulfillment. The exhibit welcomes visitors with the inspirational story of Barbie creator Ruth Handler, showcases a variety of career dolls from the past six decades, and highlights female role models who have broken boundaries. The core of the exhibit provides families a chance to explore over 15 careers that span across five categories, creators, leaders, nurturers, adventurers, and problem solvers. The exhibit offers hands-on and digital interactives, theme role play environments, and photo ops. From vet to chef, pilot to president, and rock climber to robot programmer, visitors will be able to imagine they can truly be anything. Next slide, please. And um, we're also excited to extend most of our tours, which mean a lot of your favorites have availability. If you're looking for a fall 20 exhibition um, to help boost your attendance, we have some great opportunities for you. Um, Dora and Diego, TMNT, and our Lego-based um, castle builder. Um, my team and our brand partners are happy to work with you to make plans to keep the exhibit safe, yet fun, during the COVID restrictions. Um, we have some great opportunities for 21 and beyond as well. Um, next slide, please. Here is our full calendar of, avail of availability. Um, these openings won't last long, so please let me know if you have any interest. Um, next slide, please. And quickly and finally, um, TCM has a lot of great of interactives, um, cases, and exhibit components that we no longer need. If you're looking to produce an exhibit on a dime, um, please check out what we have available um, for reuse as is or to reskin to fit your exhibit needs. Um, we are constantly adding items to the list. Um, so if you have interest in getting our updated list, um, please email Sydney Moore at the email address provided on the slide. Um, some great examples of what we have include giant um, community art boards, um, pretend play dinghies, downhill racetracks, and um, so much more um, fun interactives. So thank you guys. All right, and just a reminder that uh, this entire deck will be shared following the presentation as well as the contact information for everyone who registered to present. All right, up next is Kathy. Hey everyone, I'd like to talk about our newest exhibition, MindWorks. Uh, last September, some of you had a chance to see it at Aztec and almost immediately after we opened it, to the public and then we spent the next few months watching our visitor use it and discussing what needed to be remediated. Up until this moment in history, the most uh, recent work was getting ready for its tour. Next please. Its tour was to begin October 2020, but likely that start will be delayed. Um, MindWorks is about you. It is about your own mind and how you think, feel and react. But to really do that, you need to have opportunities and time for mindfulness, self-reflection, and awareness. The exhibition is filled with activities and challenges that lead visitors to question themselves and discover how their minds work around a collection of topics. Um, the exhibition 6,000, 8,000 square feet in size. Why such a range? Because we're rethinking a number of the experiences in the shadow of COVID-19 and whether some of the experiences will be too hands-on for travel in the immediate future. Next, please. Um, the following topics um, are what you will find at some point in the exhibition, whether it's with a minds on interactive, a graphic panel, animations, multimedia experiences, or by having a chance to lay down and dream. Next, please. And those topics will be explored in the following personal group or mega experiences that are listed here. Next, please. This is a quote that I had to share from Dr. Seuss. Um, and I love that MindWorks has the searching and the understanding of you as key. This is a picture of MindWorks memory tunnel. And whether it's a sight, a sound, a taste, or a smell, it's amazing what sparks a memory and becomes part of who we are. Um, we have seen in this industry um, how strong hands-on interactivity is in making memories, but things are changing. So before I finish, I'd like to say that if any group knows how to find even newer ways to make memories, we will do it in very meaningful ways. Next, please. If you do want more information about MindWorks, please check out our video on YouTube. And if you want further information about any of our products, uh, please contact us as you'll see. We're also a venue and eventually we are gonna be getting back to looking at our future incoming products. So just contact us. Thanks so much, bye. Okay, Debbie, you're up. Wonderful, thank you, Mac. Thank you, Cynthia. <clears throat> uh, my name is Debbie Donahue. 
And uh, right now, as you can see here, even our exhibits are following the rules and they are self-isolating in their crate. But just like us humans, they're not meant to stay inside for long. So this year we are uh, looking at the near-term availability of exhibitions that have no touch to low touch, family-friendly themes, wide appeal, and outdoor potential. Next slide, please. So we have a variety of brick-based exhibitions for uh, indoors and outdoors, or a mixture of both. Nature Pop, Nature Connects, and Animal Superpowers are by artist Sean Kenny and were made famous in zoos and gardens across the country where these sculptures were made of thousands of Lego bricks have been breaking records, increasing attendance, and driving revenue at presenting venues. Animal Paradise, Ocean, Brickosaurs, and Big Cats are also brick-based sculpture shows with wonderful themes and attendance driving visuals and content all created by our partners at Brick Live you may have heard or seen them uh, at venues like the Brookfield Zoo. Next slide, please. Dinosaurs Around the World is another show perfect for booking in the near future. The animatronic dinosaurs in this show are smooth moving, quiet, and no touching allowed. We have multiple sizes and sets of the show to meet every venue's budget and space. There's indoor and outdoor. All sets are backed by paleontological research by Dr. Erickson, who designed each of the dinosaurs in a process informed by real science. So we have both static and animatronic dinosaurs, real fossils, cast fossils, large and small dig pits, and content throughout. If you've not done this outside before, we can help you. We have several sets available of this popular show with sizes to fit every budget and venue. So um, next slide, please. Please contact me about um, your next exhibition need. Uh, we have over 40 traveling exhibitions, including several that are created by our partners, SciTech in Perth, Australia, Australia, and you'll hear from them shortly in a few minutes. Thank you. All right, Paul. So I'm unmute myself. Hey guys, I'm, I'm Paul from uh, Little Ray's Nature Center in Ottawa. Super happy to be here. Um, next slide, please, Cynthia. Uh, for those on the call that don't know us, uh, we are a fully accredited zoo, accredited by CASA's, uh, CASA Canada's accredited uh, zoos and aquariums. Uh, they set some of the highest standards for, for zoo and live animal exhibits in the world. Uh, we are a mission-based organization that's one of the largest exotic animal rescues in North America. And uh, we offer fully turnkey, fully staffed live animal exhibits with programming. And uh, we also have a few exhibits that don't have live animals for places that might not be able to have vertebrates or, or live animals for one reason or other. Uh, our exhibits range anywhere from 1,500 to 25, uh, excuse me, 1,500 to 12,000 square feet. Next slide, please. Uh, just, we currently have six different themed uh, traveling exhibits that are outlined in this slide. Um, you can check that out uh, for what we've, we've done in the past. Uh, next slide, please. We have some really exciting stuff on the go. Uh, we just have now released condensed versions of all of our exhibits, which can fit. Traditionally, our exhibits are about 5,000 square feet, and we scale them up to about 8,000 square feet traditionally. We now have fully condensed versions from 1,500 to 2,500 square feet of all of our exhibits. Uh, many of you who know us know that we have been working on a very exciting climate change exhibit. It is now uh, going into production and it is going to be released in 2022. Uh, this exhibit is being released with Ingenium, the Museum of Science and Innovation, Canada's Museum of Science and Innovation in Ottawa. So we're really excited to be partnering with them. They have done lots of work on this and we're super excited. Uh, Nature's Ninjas uh, is actually in development with the Canadian Museum of Nature, which is another project we're super excited about, and I know I'm running out of time. Next slide. And uh, Minotaur Mazes, and I know I believe Kelly is up next and his incredible team. Uh, um, some of our exhibits go up to 8,000 square feet. Kelly and his team and Shane and I have been working with them about amalgamating exhibits like our Under the Canopy exhibit. Ours is, goes up 8,000, his is 4,000 to create a 12,000 fully immersive rainforest exhibit with some of his incredible content and uh, making a larger, more robust exhibit for bigger spaces. So we're super excited to work with Kelly and Grocers is a brand new offering. We're gonna have a portable uh, greenhouse hydroponics setup that can be set up anywhere in, in or outside of museums and 
channel send out information. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate the time, everyone. Jump in, Kelly. Hi, I'm Kelly. Great to see you all today. Uh, we've been creating traveling exhibits that visitors love for three decades. We know things are tough and we want to help. Simply, our exhibits are loved and affordable in a wide range of sizes and topics. We've created COVID mitigation plans for each with distancing solutions like one-way flow. We're flexible and ready to accommodate your needs and schedules. Now I've got four slides to tell you what's new. Next slide, please. Number one, we are very proud to introduce Amazing Pollinators. It's a gamified survival challenge on a critical global issue with stunning visuals and rich content, packed with engaging games and photo ops that promote conservation and community action. It fills 3,000 to 7,000 square feet with pricing from 90 to $125,000 for three months. Next slide. Due to popular demand, we are building a new copy of our mazes and brain games for smaller galleries. This sought after exhibit can now fill, uh, fit into 3,000 square feet or fill up to 10,000, priced at 50 to $70,000 for three months. Next slide, please. Looking for near-term availability, we are introducing an industry first, the Name Your Price tool. You want to engage families but have limited budget for this fall or spring, we can provide a safe, flexible option that delights. Next slide. Looking to pack even a more powerful punch, as Paul just mentioned, we are very proud to partner with Little Ray's Nature Centers, adding their high impact live animals to our high energy exhibits will create a multi-sensory blockbuster pairing available in three packages to fit your space and budget. And last slide, please. We want you to thrive. Reach out and let us help. Thanks very much, Kelly. Michelle, are you ready? Yes. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you to Mac and Cynthia for arranging this today. I'm Michelle Wright. I'm the uh, traveling exhibit sales manager at the Minnesota Children's Museum. Uh, slide, please. Uh, in Minnesota, we're known for prints, hot dish, and our insane winters. But did you know that we also have the largest collection of children's traveling exhibits on the road? Um, our exhibits are immersive educational experiences that boost attendance, engage visitors, and spark learning. Slide, please. This fall, we have um, several of our exhibits are available. Um, we have some dis, uh, some really good discounted pricing. Um, if you have a spot that happened to be open up this, this fall, uh, it includes our um, adventures with Clifford the Big Red Dog, which is um, go gonna be retiring at the end of this calendar year. So it's a great time to get a wonderfully um, beloved character and interactive exhibit before um, he goes into retirement. Next slide, please. Um, and then this coming spring, we have uh, our exhibits, The Amazing Castle, Curious George, Storyland, and uh, our hugely popu popular exhibit, Thomas and Friends, um, is available this spring as well. Um, that exhibit um, is usually sold out, and um, just with, with these uh, uh, pandemic times, it, it happens to be available. So it's a really great time to, to nab that one while he's open. Uh, next slide, please. And then um, coming soon, we were going to be opening our um, Ardman exhibit, which was a combination of Wallace and Gromit and Shaun the Sheep called Sheer Genius at our museum this summer. Um, it's been uh, delayed. We will start fabricating and putting that together um, this fall to hopefully open by the holidays. Um, and then we will have it available um, this coming spring uh, of 2021. So um, that spot did just become available. If you're interested in, in booking either one of these, uh, once, once it leaves our, our museum, it'll split into two smaller exhibits, each about 1,500 square feet. Um, and uh, they're available this fall, and then there will be available availability sort of later on in 2022 and 2023. I have links to all of these um, exhibits in these slides, so when they're shared after the presentation, you can learn more about it there. Um, or you can contact me at mwright at mcm.org. Thanks so much. Hello, 
I am Rachel Master Marino, Children's Museum of Pittsburgh, and today I wanted to share a sneak peek of renderings from our newest traveling exhibition, Emotions at Play with Pixar's Inside Out. It's scheduled to premiere in Pittsburgh um, this fall. Um, it's a 2,000 to 2,500 square foot exhibition, and it's going to begin touring North America in summer of 2021. This exhibition offers interactive experiences that help visitors learn about the important role emotions, memory, and imagination play in our everyday lives. Hands-on and digital experiences focus on the five emotions featured in the film, joy, sadness, anger, disgust, and fear. Visitors will learn to recognize emotions and explore the ways we express and manage our own emotions. This image showcases various experiences that will be included in the exhibition, and the following slides will provide some additional details. Next slide. Visitors will be prompted to explore long-term memory and think about an important memory and how it made them feel by creating a glowing memory orb. Visitors will also explore sensory boards and tactile experiences at Imagination Land. Next slide. Visitors will step into headquarters and experience the control panel, emotion mirrors, and short-term memory, which is pictured here. Um, short-term memory will encourage visitors to choose an emotion, program their memory orb, and add it to the collection of emotions from the day. Next slide. Here, visitors will use their imagination to create a story and perform it at Dream Productions. Next slide. And um, this ex exhibition was created by the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh in partnership with Pixar Animation Studios. Um, again, it's called Emotions at Play with Pixar's Inside Out. It is 2,000 to 2,500 square feet and it will begin touring summer of 2021. So please contact me, uh, Rachel, at exhibits at pittsburghkids.org for more information on this exhibit or any of our other exhibits, including Rube Goldberg, The World of Hilarious Invention, or the Pigeon Exhibition, which we both have availability for summer of 2021. So, thank you. Okay, and on to Carrie. Hey, it's Carrie from Flying Fish. Um, for those of you who don't know uh, who Flying Fish is or what we do, we're a touring exhibition company. Whoops, we just lost her. No, sorry, Carrie, you froze. Is there anyone else from Flying Fish who would like to unmute and jump in here? Well, if she's frozen, somebody ought to thaw her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we can always come back to Carrie, um, unless there's anyone from Flying Fish who wants to jump in. And then just move on to uh, the museum. <laughs> All right. Up next. Hi everyone, my name is Chris McGarity and I'm a traveling exhibitions manager at the Field Museum. It's great to reconnect with all of you today I hope that you've all been safe and well during this difficult time. With so many changing schedules right now, I wanted to give you an update on our current offerings. Next slide, please. Uh, Biomechanics was scheduled to retire at the end of this year, but is currently being offered for the spring of 2021 with a reduced floor plan of 5,000 square feet. We also have a few new openings in 2021 as a result of COVID-19. And Turtic Dinosaurs is now available in the summer as a soothe the T-Rex experience for both the summer and fall. Lastly, our new traveling exhibition of Salica Women and Warriors will begin its tour that fall. Next slide, please. This exhibition was guest curated by Nina Sanders, or Brings the Water, a native scholar who serves as the Apsalica guide on this cultural journey. Apsalica, also known as the Crow Tribe of Montana, is the name of the people in their own language. From the moment visitors enter the exhibition, they are enveloped by Apsalica faces, voices, and culture. Apsalica Women and Warriors is a vibrant and colorful exhibition with main themes of bravery, artistry, and reverence for women. It features historic objects from the Field Museum's collections, along with the works of 18 contemporary Absalica artists, including Kevin Redstar and Ben Peace. Next slide, please. In one of the most impactful sections of the exhibition, 
Seven rare shields are presented with floor to ceiling portraits of Upsalika women protecting them. The exhibition concludes with a celebration of Upsalika culture, featuring contemporary fashions by Bethany Yellowtail and music by hip hop artist Superman. Upsalika Women and Warriors has a very limited tour traveling to a maximum of five venues. Next slide, please. Our current tour schedules include openings for all of our traveling exhibitions. Two things to note, we're hoping to extend the tour of Upsalika Women and Warriors through the spring of 2023 because of the museum's closure. But we are also exploring the possibility of extending the tour of biomechanics through 2023. Next slide, please. Uh, please contact me or my colleague, Evelyn Kuchmack, for more information regarding any of our traveling exhibitions. Thank you very much. Hey, you beat the buzzer, John Shaw. Hello, it's John Shaw with Museum EXP. I'm representing uh, today a new exhibit from our friends at Agency 808 and Crayola. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Crayola Idea Works, uh, the creativity exhibition is, uh, is not just for kids. Hang on, sorry. Um, this exhibit is Crayola's first ever branded uh, traveling museum exhibition, and it features a lot of science content as well as the creative, creative problem solving process. Uh, Crayola's reputation for innovation and its ranking as a most loved brand for moms makes it the perfect creativity ambassador for this imaginative exhibition. Crayola is a brand that your visitors know and trust. We're really proud of the personalized experience uh, with the RFAD tracking bracelets that we're developing for this project. So guests will sign in with their creative wristband ID at a crayon themed kiosk. They get geared up for their exhibition journey and they'll solve problems and make decisions that determine their creative strengths as an innovator, inventor, or an influencer. Next slide. Visitors put their creativity to the test and they practice design thinking skills with interactive challenges in the uh, Idea Lab workshop. The four sections of this area, identify, define, explore, and assess, feature activities and puzzles that prepare visitors to tackle their mission in the colorverse. Next slide. Visitors travel through the Colorverse portal to new immersive worlds, including a bustling town of Creopolis, a galactic Mars, uh, Mars colony, and an underwater sea, ba sea base to put their ID and e ID, e A skills into action and test solutions to solve problems based on current scientific research. Next slide. As they exit the Colorverse, visitors receive a personalized summary that reveals their creative strengths and highlights their individual superpowers. The exhibition also includes a curated studio store with exhibition specific merchandise for continued learning at home. The Crayola Idea Works Creativity Exhibition is designed for families with children aged six to 12. So it's perfect for science centers and um, venues that appeal to, that serve families. Uh, the exhibition has education at its core and comes with a robust teacher's guide and lesson plans from Turnkey Education. It'll premiere in spring 2021 at a top science uh, museum in the US and is available for booking in fall 2021 and beyond. To book this exhibition, you can contact Clayton Ferguson at Agency 808. Uh, Cynthia and I at Museum X EXP are super proud of this project that we're working on and uh, we're representing Clayton and, and his agency with this project. Uh, he'll handle all the booking, but we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Um, Soccer Global Exhibitions works with artists from around the world to create brand new exhibitions covering themes ranging from endangered species to gun violence around the United States, from the current refugee crises around the world to music. All of our exhibitions are affordable and easy to install, and we love working with new venues. Next slide, please. Currently traveling, we have a loft. Birds, insects, and even some mammals are able to fly and soar. Plants, seeds, and kites are carried on the breeze, and mankind has always dreamt of ways to fly. This exhibition explores new perspectives through which to see our world. It's available through 2022. It has 39 works of art running 205 linear feet. Next slide, please. Beyond the Mirror looks at how we view ourselves beyond what society tells us to. Next slide, please. Musica, Pablo Picasso said to draw, you must close your eyes and sing. This exhibition explores the wonderful ways that music can serve as inspiration for the creative process. Next slide, please. 
Currently, we have 15 exhibitions traveling. As I said, all of them are easy to install. We handle all of the logistics and shipping is included in our price. Our most expensive exhibition is well under $10,000 and I cannot emphasize enough, we are willing to work with any museum this year or next that needs an exhibition. We understand the budget crunch, we will make it happen. We also work with custom exhibitions with museums. We tell your story, adding new voices from artists around the world to your community discussion. We can add workshops, art, live artist interactions, and we are working on lots of virtual programming activities available to continue the discussion even when we can't be together. Thank you. Hey, good, good job, good job. Uh, Helen. No, just really quickly, Helen, before you jump in, um, I see Carrie is back online. Carrie, we'll um, go back to your presentation at the very end. <laughs> Thank you. All good? Good. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. The Canadian Museum for Human Rights uh. Canada is Canada's newest purpose-built national museum. It uses innovative storytelling to promote reflection and dialogue about the importance of human yeah, rights. Else to our I traveling know. exhibitions range from our major shows of four to 5,000 square feet to scalable experiences that can be offered in ranges from 300 to 1,500 square feet. Next slide, please. Today I'm introducing two exhibitions currently in development intended for broad North American tour. The first exhibition will invite visitors inside groundbreaking moments when music played a pivotal role in social transformation and political change. Engaging visitors with iconic artifacts, powerful multimedia experiences, and fully accessible and innovative interactives, this exhibition will showcase the power of music to embody our highest aspirations for freedom, equality, justice, and dignity spanning a range of social and political issues, both past and present, and representing a range of musical artists and genres, visitors will discover music as a catalyst to agency and action. Next slide, please. The second show looks at a period in Canada from the Cold War of the 1950s until the 1990s, when homosexuals were purged from the military, police, and federal civil service, as they were considered a threat to national security. Through rich interpretive elements, immersive scenography, and mixed media experiences, visitors will be encouraged to rethink history through a queer lens and to be inspired to create a future in which the rights of LGBTQ2 plus people are respected. Next slide. Since inauguration, our museum has been recognized as a world leader in accessible design, which informs all of our exhibition development. From three-dimensional tactile images to embedded sign language in all our film and video, to descriptive audio and wheelchair accessible viewing heights and tables. All CMHR traveling exhibitions include accessible features that create inclusive experiences. Next slide, please. Our award-winning digital components are designed to immerse visitors in the stories they are exploring. For example, touring now with Mandela's Struggle for Freedom on the lower left of the screen you can see is our award-winning digital poster making table. Visitors embrace the spirit of political mobilization by designing their own rally poster, then publish it directly into the gallery's display or share online. Next slide, please. Our inclusive exhibitions are supported by a remote IT desk, grade school education programs, public program options, and other services. Contact our team. We'd love to bring our exhibitions to your museum and audiences. Thank you. Thanks, Helen. Hello friends, um, this is Amber Stevenson from the Science Museum of Minnesota. Um, you can go on to the next slide. Really nice to see all of you. Um, I'd like to tell you about three things. We have an exhibit for sale, a brand new exhibit, and then some upcoming openings. So first, our exhibit that is for sale is Math Moves. This is a 5,000 square foot exhibit. It has um, over 20 interactive stations. Um, it focuses on ratios and proportions. And um, it's been a really successful exhibit. We have a copy in our own museum. We're looking to sell this um, to a museum that might want to have it um, as a permanent addition. It's something you can also swap in and out um, if you'd like to um, think about that um, as you might have some, some uh, changes in your, in your calendar. Um, next slide, please. And then um, the new exhibit that I'd like to tell you about is this um, Skin, Living Armor, Evolving Identity. Um, this is an exhibit that was created by the California Academy of Sciences. 
And it, um, it, it features scientific specimens that um, showcase incredibly adaptive properties of skin, um, including its remarkable ability to support and re regenerate a variety of keratin-based structures like armored reptile scales, aerodynamic bird feathers, and insulating, insulating um, bird feathers. Um, it has a color and culture section that presents the topics of racism, prejudice, and discrimination through the lens of history and science. And overall, this exhibit um, tells the story of skin through a biological and an anthropological and social lens. And if you'd like to go to the next slide, um, I have a few more pictures of this exhibit. It will be modified for travel um, by, by our museum. And then we will be opening this exhibit in the spring of 2021. And this is actually the first time we've talked about it. So um, if you'd like to get on the tour, it's available uh, summer 2021 and beyond. You can reach out to me about that. Um, uh, next slide, please. Um, we also have a few availabilities on our other tours. We have um, Mental Health, Mind Matters, um, our space, um, Ultimate Dinosaurs, and then Maya. If you'd like to uh, reach out about any of those availabilities that we have in 2021, we'd be happy to talk to you about those. And um, if you'd like to go to the next slide, here's, here's my contact information. Um, we are also a renter of exhibits and we are looking for um, spring of 2022 and beyond, mostly 2022 and 2023. So we'll be, we'll be taking a look at options coming up. Um, and we also design, develop, and build uh, exhibits. So reach out to us if you're looking to start a new project. Thanks so much. Hi everyone, good morning and it's great to see everyone even from the comfort of home. I'm uh, Jeff Benamo with the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. Uh, next please. With all the changes, we just wanted to update our tour schedule for a mirror maze, Numbers in Nature, which continues to be well received on its North American tour. The exhibit can scale from about six to 8,000 square feet and it reveals and explains the mathematical patterns that are in the natural world from the spirals of a sunflower seed to the ridges of a majestic mountain range to the layouts of the universe. Next, please. Through dozens of steam-based activities, which include robust pre and post field trip materials, an immersive intro film and mathematical artifacts, a mirror maze will change the way you and your guests look at the world around them, and they'll suddenly realize the patterns are virtually everywhere as you start to look. Next, please. As many of you know, the centerpiece, of course, is nearly a 2,000 square foot giant mirror maze, a sea of triangle chambers that will make you feel you've stepped inside a kaleidoscope. In addition to amazing lighting and music, unexpected dead ends will trigger intriguing questions and even artifacts. And of course, it's the best setup for those super selfies. Next, please. The best part of the show is it's extremely affordable. As many of us are experiencing uh, budget constraints, it's 55,000 per month plus inbound shipping. And that 55,000 per month includes all the travel costs for the supervisors that are uh, sent on behalf of the museum to help your venue install the exhibition. We've had great responses at the museums you see on the slide in front of you. And we have availability for fall 2020 through spring 2021. And then again, fall 2021 and beyond. Uh, please reach out for additional terms and we hope to see everyone at our permanent copy of Amir Maze at MSI during AAM when we can all be together in mm -hmm. Chicago next May. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I miss you all. I'm Jennifer from the American Museum of Natural History. Thank you to Cynthia, the 10 board, and ILE for arranging this. This is great. Um, I'm very happy to present our newest exhibition, The Nature of Color. It actually just opened just before everything was shut down. Um, but the inspiration for this exhibit was to present something that was fun and visually appealing while still being rooted uh, fundamentally in science. Um, the exhibit is 8,400 square feet and we have availability starting in 2022. Next slide, please. So the exhibit opens with an immersive um, entrance that alternates between two kinds of lighting, um, one that illuminates everything in color and the other that makes everything appear in gray. And what we wanted to do was to really set the tone for this exhibit and allow visitors to imagine a world without color. Next slide, please. At the center of the exhibit is a color lab that goes into the fundamental and asks the different questions. So how um, colors can be mixed and separated, um, how our eyes can detect color and how our brains can perceive it. Next slide, please. 
And then from the center of the exhibit, there are four different rooms. Um, the green room explores color in the natural world, how the use of color allows plants and animals to survive and reproduce. The, in the yellow room, we look at how colors evoke different emotional reactions and how this is shaped by culture and our own personal experience. The blue section showcases the technology of making dyes and pigments along with the biology and physics of color. And finally, using the color of red as an example, we show how we attach meanings to colors throughout history. So everything from cave art to sports to fashion. Next slide, please. There is a large painting wall where visitors can paint and play using their entire body. And the exhibit concludes with a look inward um, with portraits showing the diversity of the human skin. Next slide, please. Um, so feel free to reach out if you're interested in the nature of color or, or any of our other exhibitions. Thank you very much. Jen. Thank you everyone uh, for providing this opportunity to allow uh, everyone to stay connected and able to uh, still present during these trying times. I'm Troy Carlson, the CEO of Stage 9 Exhibits. Uh, next slide. With eight unique exhibitions, including Popnology, The Lost World of Dragons, Sweet, Rock You, Toytopia, and the Animation Academy, and Hall of Heroes, we've been busy working with the museums, uh, which we are currently exhibiting at, along with our future bookings in 2020, to find equitable solutions that work as a win-win for everyone involved during these difficult times. At stage nine, we are uniquely positioned to support any institution as we move into 2021 with aggressive strategies to minimize risk and maximize success for your venue. Our team has worked to identify interactives and high touch surfaces that can be minimized, modified, and removed to any future booking to work with the overall planning of your venue while we all evolve and modify our practices during COVID-19. Next slide. We at Stage 9 design, build, ship, and tour all of our exhibitions in-house. Because of our total unique hands-on approach, we have been called on by other museums to design and build their projects in recent years. The same winning formula that has created our exhibition success can work for your institution as well. Next slide. As our team works through these difficult times, we continue to find motivation when we receive a testimonial from a client about one of our project success at our venue at their venue. The biggest confirmation of our design, build, ship, tour, support process is when an institution books another of our exhibits or asks for a custom project as has recently happened because of the overwhelming success venues have experienced from Expedition Dinosaur. Next slide. Since its debut, museums have had tremendous success and several have asked to book the second act of Expedition Dinosaur. When we created Expedition Dinosaur, we wanted it to be unique to the market in our design build process and budget friendly. Expedition Dinosaur was considered the first chapter of a longer evolutionary story of dinosaurs, which we are going to tell. The second act is scheduled to debut at the Bishop Museum in October 2021 and will take guests through the last part of the Mesozoic period through the catastrophic asteroid impact and the rise of mammals. Welcome to Expedition Dinosaur, the rise of mammals. In conclusion, we are all working to support each other. We at Stage 9 Exhibits and EDG truly approach each day with a focus to create winning solutions for everyone involved. Thank you. Hello. Um, thank you, Cynthia and Mac. Uh, I'm Jen Wallace from National Geographic. Um, so National Geographic partner with the Jane Goodall Institute to develop a new exhibition on the life and legacy of Dr. Jane Goodall called Becoming Jane, which covers the entire arc of her life from childhood to present day and her remarkable contributions to science and conservation. The exhibit opened a few months ago at our museum in BC. Next, please. The exhibit is large. It's five to 7,000 square feet rich with AV and contains over 30 objects on loan, such as Jane's childhood toys, notes and books, and field objects such as chimp tools and her field journals. Next, please. There is nice interactivity in many parts of the exhibit, including the use of augmented reality, a life-size hologram of Jane herself, and a recreation of her research tent in Gombe. Next, please. 
The exhibit is capped off with a call to action urging visitors to take a conservation pledge. And the North American tour is taking shape, so please let us know if you have interests and also be sure to check out the virtual tour of the exhibit on our website. Next, please. I also wanted to mention quickly that as some venues are looking for ways to engage with returning visitors outside in your botanical gardens and your open air plazas, that we have 19 exhibitions and in fact most of these are photography exhibits. We have two physical exterior shows with immediate availability featuring the photo arc, which are fabricated on 28 large kiosks, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner of this slide. Or we can also easily send you a curated photography show digitally, and via a Dropbox link, you could produce to specs suitable to your outdoor space. You could host a family photo walk, a date night, or a guest lecture with local photographers. No object loans, no install staff from us. Just something to keep in mind to attract visitors back to your grounds this year. Next, please. And lastly, for future planning, we're piloting a new VR kit and looking for a few partners to kick this off. These are essentially 30 Oculus Go headsets packaged with National Geographic 360 VR content. Thank you to ILE and to TEN uh, for this opportunity to share. Thanks, Jen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lise Dubé-Cher. I'm the Executive Director of International Arts and Artists. We are a nonprofit um, traveling exhibition service that focuses on art exhibitions. We currently have about 25 exhibitions that are on the road, about to open, or are um, still to open in the next several months. And of course, like everybody else, we've been playing um, a lot of uh, move things around lately, but we are really pleased to see everyone this morning and to be participating. Um, IANA, as we're better known, has been uh, with us for, been around for 25 years, and so we have a long history of traveling um, art exhibitions throughout the country. Next slide, please. Today I want to talk to you about our exhibition that we launched in February called, um, Modern, called Modern Design, Mid-Century to Today. Um, it is an exhibition that is focused on obviously mid-century decorative arts moving through to today. Um, and it contains four themes, which you will see here. One focuses on good design. The other is postmodern, neo-modern, and responsible design. Um, the exhibition is really designed um, to appeal to a wide audience, but we know it will resonate quite well with millennials and the Gen Zs. Um, of the world who um, have a strong affinity for, for good design and for um, the aesthetic that's presented through this exhibition. We've created uh, this exhibition in partnership with the Stewart Program for Modern Design, which is based in Montreal, and all of the objects in the collection, in the exhibition, are uh, drawn from the Stewart Collection. The tour has about 120 objects in it and is quite comprehensive and takes us through several themes. Next slide, please. There are many iconic images um, in, and objects in the exhibition um, and many names of visionaries that I think many of you will recognize in terms of Florence Knoll, Charles and Ray Eames, Dieter Rams, Philip Stark, Zaha Adi, Michael Graves, just to name a few. Uh, next slide, please. The exhibition really takes people through a visual journey that covers seven decades of innovative design and provides global perspectives. Um, as I mentioned, there are 120 different objects in the exhibition and they come from Italy, Japan, France, the United States, Canada, and many other countries. And we are really pleased to be partnering with the Stuart Program for Modern Design to tour this exhibition as they rarely tour their collections. So it is a great opportunity for your audiences to have an opportunity to see some of these objects which are familiar to many of us and often we take for granted um, in terms of our daily lives. Some of them are just part of what we do every day. In you saw the Chemex that was earlier in the slides. And so it really is fun to sort of bring these into the context of the museum and to introduce audiences to these um, objects as innovative design and important iconic objects that have really helped to shape um, the design aesthetics that we have today. The exhibition includes furniture, ceramics, metalworks, graphics, textiles, so it is quite diverse. Next slide, please. 
There is also a section on responsible design, which we felt was important to include as well. So I think that will resonate with a wide variety of audiences and will really give people the opportunity to see how design has evolved from the mid-century to today. Next slide, please. And the information is all here about the exhibition. It will be on tour from 2022 to 2024. Um, the participation fee is $85,000. How well we understand that everybody is challenged right now. So we have um, instituted a very flexible deposit and payment plan. And we are also currently offering discounts to anyone who books a show before June 30th of 2020. So if you are interested in it, please reach out to us. We are being very flexible and doing our best to make everything work for um, all of the museums um, who are trying to just figure out how to evolve into the next iteration of whatever the new normal will be. So thank you all this, and it was great to see everyone and we look forward to, to connecting with everyone next year at AAM. Awesome, thanks so much. Hi everybody, this is Nia Shalais Nelson from Outhouse Exhibit Services in the Twin Cities. Next slide, please. First up for you, we have Monarchs and Wil Milkweed, A Story of Survival. This is a gallery exhibit that introduces the complex relationship between monarchs and milkweed. Lighting effects, motion activated video projections and personal technology activated graphics create layers of interactive experiences while technology free exploratory experiences are accomplished through seek and find activities embedded in the murals portraying natural scenes throughout the exhibit. Special features include a monarch sanctuary multimedia immersive theater experience and the optional inclusion of a live butterfly lepidarium. 3,500 square feet minimum and availability starts in the spring 2021. Next slide, please. Next up for you, we have Spotlight on Pollinators, which is an all weather exhibit built to withstand wind, rain, sun, or horticultural staff. Reading Rails and Company greatly magnified pollinator partner custom graphic panels, which are a layered graphic presentation featuring a pollinator species atop a flowering plant. 12 overall spotlight graphics pairings are able to be placed throughout the grounds of your facility to allow for flexible installations and independent learning experiences. This exhibit brings home important conservation messaging for visitors of all ages and is customizable to tie into your specific mission. Availability starts for this exhibit in spring of 2021. Next slide, please. Live butterfly exhibitions are probably the ultimate hands-free and immersive visitor experience. These are freestanding enclosures from 1,200 to 2,500 square feet in size. Uh, they can be a seasonal outdoor installation on your grounds or a year-round indoor installation if you want to bring a little bit of summer to your visitors in the winter time. Uh, we have availability in our scheduling for these installations starting in summer of 2021. Either of the previously mentioned exhibits are great pairings with these butterfly exhibition experiences. Next slide, please. From our offerings, we have near term availability for several different options, including Tarantulas Alive and Up Close, Dr. Antimo's Palace of Exotic Wonders, uh, and also bugs outside the box. You can uh, get a hold of me to, to get more details about when and how they are available. Next slide, please. I appreciate so much your time and it's really wonderful to be a part of such a vibrant and talented community of professionals. I wish everyone all the best in the coming months. Awesome, thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, thank you to Mac and Colby at Ali and to the Traveling Exhibit uh, Network for hosting this uh, event. Science North truly appreciates the opportunity to present to all of you. It's great to see you. And, um, you know, traveling exhibits have become an integral part of the renewing visitor experiences that attract new and returning visitors to see our beautiful venues. And we look forward to continuing that relationship with all of you. Back in September, which now seems like a lifetime ago, at Aztec in Toronto, we announced our latest partnership with Ripley Entertainment and Guinness World Records, the science of Guinness World Records. This 6,000 square foot exhibit is jam packed with interactive experience. So, sorry, uh, next slide. This uh, 6,000 square foot exhibit is jammed with interactive experiences where your visitors can put themselves in the shoes of record holders and try their hand at their challenges, all while learning about the science behind these amazing records 
and how science is used to set them. Next slide, please. All around the world, people are pushing themselves to achieve new and amazing things. The world is full of fascinating people achieving strange and incredible feats. Now, for the first time ever, we're looking into the science behind these mesmerizing accomplishments. The key messages of this truly amazing exhibit are that it reminds us that anyone anywhere can be a record breaker. It demonstrates that Guinness World Records applies a rigorous process to the adjudication and award of world record titles that parallels the process of scientific inquiry, and that science can explain the incredible and help you develop your record breaking skills and abilities. Each tour slot will include an opportunity for an official adjudication event right at your uh, venue and Science North will support your venue to meet temporary COVID-19 restrictions upon reopening such as reconfigured linear floor plans to help control visitor flow and limitations, our own professional experienced tech staff to install or deinstall the exhibit in person or virtually and I want to shout out to Imagine uh, in, in supporting us and in, in working together and in, in doing that. Assistance with visitor communications and marketing. Uh, next slide. Uh, Science North has 10 traveling exhibits available ranging from 1,000 square feet to 6,000 square feet or even up to 10,000 square feet. Uh, next slide, please. And next slide. If, if you're interested in any of these exhibits, please contact us. We'd love to speak with you. All of our exhibits, the 10 that we have, are listed on the other pages. And uh, of course, they'll be shared with everybody after this uh, 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 event. Thanks again for the time uh, and uh, for the opportunity. Nice to see you all. Thanks, Jerry. Peter. Hello, uh, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, this is Peter Elsesser from uh, Museums Partners Headquarter in Austria and Europe. Uh, may I introduce my friend and colleague uh, Siegfried Brugger. He leads our traveling exhibitions program. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to present uh, exhibitions um, online today uh, via video conference because we really miss uh, the AAM convention in, in, in San Francisco. We, we looked uh, very much forward to this event. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we, we have a very short notice availability uh, of our blockbuster Egypt exhibition. Uh, that's a really a unique opportunity uh, because of the lockdown of a uh, museum in the United States. Uh, this exhibition is available from July 2020. It's very short notice. <laughs> it's on storage at the moment. Um, so uh, this exhibition is available with 341 original artifacts, a real blockbuster show. Uh, so. Um, the budget is also very good to, to negotiate with us at the moment for this show. Next slide, please. Uh, we have a new touring exhibition um, under production. Uh, we teamed up with a very well-known science museum uh, in the United States to produce Anchor. Uh, it's uh, an exhibition in collaboration also with uh, the National Museums of Cambodia and uh, the Government of Cambodia, the Ministry of Culture. This exhibition uh, will premiere in California in February 2022 and is available for three slots only after California beginning from September 2022. A very immersive multimedia technology exhibition. Next slide, please. And we have a new concept. We copied our, our popular Vikings and Maya exhibitions. We shrinked it uh, so uh, it's more flexible. It's available in compact size for smaller museum spaces with a very affordable budget. Next slide, please. Uh, so please uh, don't be shy, get in contact with us, uh, Siegfried, Peter, uh, also with our North America team, Jennifer, Linda, and Blake. Uh, we are really looking forward to answer your questions and we hope to see you all healthy again, uh, I think next year <laughs> during AM. Thank you, Max, thank you, Cynthia. Thanks, Peter. And thank you, everybody. Hi, everyone. Um, can you hear me fine? So hi from London. I'm uh, Pauline from the Natural um, History Museum, as you can, um, you can see. And we've got a new fully turnkey family exhibition called Jurassic Oceans, Monsters of the Deep. Next slide, please. The exhibition will launch at Phil Museum in, in Chicago and will be available to um, hosting venues from fall 2021. 
Um, Jurassic Ocean is a very immersive, playful, and educational experience where visitors can discover 94 real specimens, most of them leaving the museum for the first time. Um, there's also models and touchable objects, and all those creatures will be brought to life through CGI, films, interactives, to create a real dive into the Jurassic experience. Next slide, please. So the exhibition Look and Feel was created by the team at Film Museum and we're very happy with this partnership. Uh, all the set works, um, uh, display cases and AV equipment will be included in the touring package and the exhibition design can be easily modified to suit um, any gallery. Next slide, please. So what can visitors expect? Well, uh, a fun family experience, um, exploring the uh, Jurassic Seas, learning how marine reptiles became the top predators, but what other creatures who um, lived in the oceans, um, some familiar like sharks, um, some maybe more surprising like a giant fish whose tail was 10 feet tall. It's, very, it's accessible and suitable for all audiences and learning style with um, lots of hands-on interactives and touchable objects throughout the exhibition. And it's not just about the Jurassic Ocean, but also understanding modern oceans, the, the marine reptile groups that still survive like turtles and crocodiles. Next uh, slide, please. And uh, the exhibition also includes an educational package for children aged six to 11 um, featuring a film with our museum scientist. Next slide, please. Uh, so there's a lot more material available if you're interested. Feel free to reach out and I'd like to say a big thank you to TEN and ILE for organizing this today. Good morning and greetings from Athens, Greece. Uh, I want to wish everyone strength and courage to these uh, incredibly challenging times. Uh, for those of you who don't know us quickly, uh, Pan Art was established in 2004 where I was director of a private museum. Um, and it's in partnership with my business partner who was the founder of the same museum. We specialize in providing single source themed high profile art exhibitions to museums. Next slide, please. All of our collections are a very well-known artists, which are ideal for this uh, incredibly challenging time where museums will be relaunching themselves uh, to have a high profile name that will not only be embraced by their audience, but also by local media, allowing museums to put themselves back on the map. Um, the details you'll see on all of these collections, the basic information, um, all of our program has been turned upside down basically. So this has offered a lot of opportunities. We are now putting the pieces of the puzzle back together. Um, so this means that uh, even within 20 and 21, some of our most high profile exhibitions are available. Uh, Toulouse Le Trek right now is in Korea. We're looking at having an extension there, but most likely it will be coming back. Next slide, please. This collection, or this actually this uh, collections is of over 3,000 works of the world of the most famous and most iconic um, American illustrators, including Norman Rockwell, Maxfield Paris, J.C. Leyendecker, Howard Pyle, and N.C. Wyatt. Um, and it's an ideal opportunity for museums and their curators to basically customize an exhibition that fits around any season uh, or any theme that they want to focus on. Next slide, please. These two collections are, again, very um, high profile. Uh, the same way that M.C. Escher, Victor Vassarelli, is a perfect opportunity also for science museums that they can focus on the art and mathematics connection. Next slide, please. New additions are Man Ray and Bob Dylan, uh, and they have just come on board, so we're very happy to be sharing them with uh, museum audiences around the world. Thank you very much, and good luck to everyone. Hi, greetings from London. I'm Hannah from the British Library. Not to be confused with the British Museum, we are the National Library of the UK and hold over 170 million items from every age of civilization. Our collection ranges from books, manuscripts, maps, prints and drawings, to oral history, music recordings and websites. Next slide, please. Uh, we're quite new to touring, but you may have heard of and hopefully even seen our Harry Potter, A History of Magic exhibition, either in London or New York. 
If not, you have an opportunity to catch it in Japan soon. Um, Harry Potter was our most popular exhibition to date. And following on from this, we are developing another fantasy literature show. Next slide, please. Fantasy will be on display at the British Library in 2022, and we are keen to find partner venues to host it afterwards. This will be the first exhibition to explore the entire fantasy genre, from its roots in classical literature to its rising popularity in the 20th century, and expansion into different media today, including film and video games. Fantasy will be available to tour from 2023, However, if you are looking for something sooner, we have a couple of other options. Next slide, please. Buddhism was our autumn 2019 exhibition and showcased the British Library's rich collection of Asian manuscripts, which is one of the finest in the world. This exhibition is available for tour next year and would beautifully complement any museums with Buddhist, Buddhist sculpture collections. Next slide, please. We also have one slot available still for our Writing Making Your Mark exhibition in either 2021 or 22. This exhibition examines the history of the written word and its role in today's digital age and includes a wide variety of artifacts. Next slide, please. So if you're interested in any of the options I've mentioned today, or would like to know more about the rest of our touring offer, please do get in touch at hannah.kaufman at bl.uk or touringexhibitions at bl.uk. You can also find more information on our website. Thank you. Hello, I am Angie Berry. I'm the curator of the exhibitions and collections at the Gadsden Art Center and Museum. We are a small, very small accredited art museum in North Florida. Um, I'm here to talk about our newest exhibition, Compelled to Create, their paintings by Eddie Muma. Next slide. Eddie Muma didn't take up painting until the age of 69 while he was basically living alone. He was homebound due to medical problems and living in Gainesville, Florida. And he spent the last 17 years of his life painting nonstop. But during his lifetime, he really only allowed one person outside of his family to view his work. With no formal training or even access to a lot of supplies, he created over a thousand paintings and uh, his own style. Next slide. In addition to the work, it's also kind of a fascinating story about the recovery uh, of his work and um, a twist of fate, a young local art collector who had admired Muma's work from afar happened upon Muma's family purging his house after he, his passing. The collector purchased 800 paintings on the spot and saved those from the dumpster. He spent years collecting and um, cleaning and restoring them and eventually Muma's work ended up in prestigious, um, prestigious collections like the Smithsonian American Art Museum. Next slide. The work is vibrant, expressive, and it lends itself to really interesting installations. Some of the pieces in the exhibition are copies of, um, that Muma created of famous paintings. Um, and it's fascinating to show the visitors his interpretation as he learned from the masters. Next slide. Muma also often painted on both sides of his boards and canvases. And five of the works that we have in the exhibition have stands that can be affixed to pedestals and um, 360 viewing. There's also a comprehensive biography of Muma that was written in 2016 and we have a video presentation of the biographer talking um, on our website right now. This is our current exhibit so there are several um, videos available to view right now. Next slide. We are an accredited art museum since 2016 and we are also interested in borrowing visual art exhibitions. We also have a permanent collection of mostly Southern vernacular art that um, portions of are available to travel in addition to this exhibit. So please contact me at the email there. Thank, Thank you. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm having some um, video glitchiness this morning, but it's great to see everyone. I'm Catherine Diaz, and Daniel Guyton and I are OMSI's traveling exhibits team based in Portland, Oregon. We have nine exhibits touring North America currently and three exhibits in development. Next, please. 
Alegramente is a bicultural, bilingual Spanish-English exhibit that celebrates the early relational connections in a child's life and how those loving, playful interactions with adults build brain health for a lifetime. Um, it's designed to reach both adults and entertain children in tandem, which was no small task, of course. Um, and we really hope that caregivers walk away knowing that the instincts they have about how to connect with children in their lives is everything they need to support healthy brain development for a lifetime. Next, please. Designing Our Tomorrow is a bilingual, bicultural Spanish-English exhibit as well, and it's all about biomimicry and how nature's ingenuity helps us achieve sustainable engineering goals for a healthy future. Um, it includes design challenges and biomimetic artifacts to demonstrate how biomimicry and sustainable engineering are connected. Next, please. Winter Worlds is a working title for an exhibit of the same size as Designing Our Tomorrow 2,500 square feet. Um, and it takes visitors through the portal of whimsy and wonder deep into the science of snow with uh, revealing that snow shapes and sustains life on earth in surprising ways. Next, please. Um, this is uh, what we have available near term. And like many of you are happy to work with um, your budget, just be in touch. Animation Land is the exhibit that's featured here in the photos. It's a super fun exhibit about animation that everyone who's hosted it so far has loved it and engages audiences of all ages. Next, please. And again, I'm Catherine. Uh, Daniel Guyton and I um, can support your needs with uh, whatever you need in the coming years. Um, and you can contact us here or uh, go to our website for info on all of the exhibits mentioned here and the ones that are cur currently touring. Thanks. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, everybody. It's Mark Greenberg from San Antonio, Texas. Can you see me? Because I still see Catherine on my screen. Yep, we can see you. Awesome. Um, hey, I uh, just hope everyone is uh, staying safe and doing well and, and hope all you and your family and colleagues are, are sheltering in place and, and you know we're going to get through this. Um, next please. So today I'd, I'd like to focus on three core STEM exhibits that are flexible and modular. Uh, they can be spread out without losing continuity or uh, items can actually be removed if your gallery's tight and you need to provide a more distance between activities but you know due to the exhibit's rich content visitors can still enjoy a wonderful fun learning experience. Um, working with, we're working with our venue partners now on rescheduling, so it's safe to say uh, we'll have some near-term openings as things shift around. So the first uh, exhibit we want to talk about is Math Alive, uh, which you've heard about before. Uh, it's a high energy, highly interactive experience that reveals the math uh, behind things kids love to do. Uh, hopefully answers that question, when will I ever use this stuff? Um, we have two new interactives that were recently added. Uh, an extreme weather alert that talks about big data uh, and you get to actually go across a green screen and broadcast your weather alert in front of a tornado or a sandstorm or an ice storm. Uh, and cybersecurity, which um, maybe up to three months ago was one of the biggest topics in the news always. Uh, but we have another uh, multiplayer station uh, spread out uh, where you can learn about different types of ways to protect your data, your family, uh, your computer, and um, it, it's been a very popular ex exhibition. Uh, it launched at the Smithsonian. It's been to great science centers uh, around the world. It is bilingual, uh, both English and Spanish, and we have a set that's bilingual English and Arabic. And um, as I said, it, it's very flexible. Uh, we have floor plans that range from 3,000 to 6,000 square feet. Uh, next, please. Uh, above and beyond is our interactive experience that takes you into the future of aviation and aerospace. Uh, explore many forces of flight, uh, themes up faster, farther, higher, smarter. Uh, that also is available in multiple languages, launched in the Smithsonian, available from four to 7,000 square feet. This two minutes goes very, very fast. Uh, next, please. <laughs> Uh, and finally, our Leonardo da Vinci exhibit, 40 machines recreated with period tools and materials. It's now available in 5,000 square feet, three or 2,000 square feet formats, also bilingual. Um, and thank you, next. Sorry, I've been with my daughter a lot uh, playing music. These are the other exhibits we have available. Our Vatican exhibit is still on the road, will be on the road, but has been delayed. Um, 
And we look forward to seeing you hopefully at Aztec uh, this fall. These are our contacts. Please give us a call when you can. Thanks. Lisa. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm from SciTech. We're a science centre in Perth, Australia. And today I'm very excited to share with you our exhibition, Earth Matters, Rethink the Future. Co-designed with our audience, Earth Matters explores changes we're seeing in our natural world and how the smallest of actions can have a big impact. There are five distinct zones within the exhibition, from understanding through to reflection. Central to the experience is how innovative STEM solutions can help us adapt our way of living for a more sustainable future. Next slide, please. Um, today I'm going to share three exhibits. Um, the first of these is Banks Hill Woodland. So it's a large immersive exhibit where visitors step inside a diverse ecosystem. So here they'll interact with fascinating wildlife such as the majestic Carnaby's black cockatoo. They'll pick up seeds and watch them grow, all the while learning how to touch the earth lightly with their actions. Next slide, please. Our microgrid Playground is a game-like exhibit which explores microgrids and peer-to-peer -peer energy sharing. Um, so you can jump on, choose your energy source and then start pedaling to light up the townscape. Um, once your battery is full, you can choose to share with a neighbour, um, making this a really fun and engaging collaborative experience. Next slide, please. Um, so the final exhibit I'm going to share from Earth Matters is made up of a large 3D printed coral reef um, brought to life with stunning video projections. So here you'll discover how the choices you make impact the marine habitat in front of you. Um, so you can take on the role of a farmer deciding how to enrich your soil or someone fishing deciding what to catch. Um, and your goal is all about um, trying to create this vibrant coral reef um, flourishing with marine life. Um, next slide, please. Um, we're in the final stage of our build for the exhibition and we're really looking forward to launching it. Um, the exhibition will then be toured by Imagine Exhibitions um, for the North American market. Um, with its emphasis on problem solving for a sustainable future, um, we believe the themes of this exhibition are incredibly relevant and universal. Thank you. Hi, my name is Robin Hill. I'm an exhibit designer at the Dunn Museum in Libertyville, Illinois, and we'll be promoting Marvelocity, the art of Alex Ross. Next slide. This exhibit highlights original artwork from comic book illustrator Alex Ross's most recent book, Marvelocity. It's a Marvel retrospective art book. Alex Ross is considered one of the greatest artists in the field of comic books and has created some of the most iconic images known to fans today. Next slide. He has revitalized classic superheroes into works of fine art. The book jacket fe features 14 pages of Marvel characters. This exhibit features all 14 covers plus extra five cover ideas and original prelim preliminary sketches. Next slide. The exhibit features over 50 framed works on paper, including paintings, sketches, and childhood drawings. There are also six resin head busts of Marvel characters and one small resin statue. The exhibit is approximately 1,500 square feet. Next slide. Visitors can hear firsthand from Alex Ross about the making of Marvelocity in an exclusive video interview. The exhibition also comes with exclusive access to Alex Ross Inc. merchandise for your gift shops, as well as access to high resolution graphics for publicity and wall graphics. Next slide. We have available time slots for this coming fall 2020 through the fall of 2023. This is the first time artwork by Alex Ross will be touring around the country. Next slide. If you want more information, you can contact me at the Dunn Museum or click on the website that's on this page. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Heather from Virtual Science Center. We're delighted to share photos of Reinventing Reality, Explore the Science of Virtual Reality, which opened at the Lawrence Hall of Science up in Berkeley in November last year. Next slide, please. Reinventing Reality is the first major exhibition to explore the science of immersive technologies. And in the first three months, we had over, over 40,000 visitors and 160 school groups see the show. 
We were delighted with the response. It wasn't unusual to hear kids calling over their parents to try a particular exhibit or saying that they were gonna come back tomorrow to do it all again. For most of the kids and adults, reinventing reality provided their first experience in VR. And there was a sense of real excitement at putting on a headset and then diving into the science that created this incredible digital world. Next slide. The exhibit is 5,000 square feet and includes 15 interactive exhibits which explore how VR works. Visitors can experiment with sensors and cameras in the headset lab and even feel how their arm responds to virtual stretching. Next slide. Many of the exhibits don't need headsets, so families and friends can learn together. For example, um, um, people can find objects in a futuristic landscape using the latest eye tracking technology or set up a virtual, ex a virtual band to explore how VR sound is modeled. Next slide. Thanks. For guests who have always wanted to float down the Grand Canyon or make a virtual sculpture, there are 12 VR pods for thrilling full body experiences. In just two months, nearly 10,000 games were played. Finally, in the careers and creators area, six professionals from areas including healthcare and space sciences talk about how they are using these technologies to interact with the digital world in incredible ways. So when you're ready, we would love to talk to you about our show. Our exhibit catalog is hot off the press. So if you'd like to choose a selection of interactors for, for your museum, then I would be delighted to share that with you now. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, um, or good afternoon. I'm very happy to let you all know about the New York Historical Society's Traveling Exhibition Program. Uh, the New York Historical Society is the oldest museum in New York City, uh, founded in 1804. We have a collection of more than 80,000 artworks and historical artifacts and a very active traveling exhibition program. At the moment, we have 16 traveling exhibitions available. Next slide, please. Next, uh, this is our newest traveling exhibition. Uh, it is the only exhibition to date that looks at the women photographers that worked for Life magazine. The exhibition focuses on the six staff, female staff photographers at Life magazine. Perhaps the best known of these is Margaret Burke White, whose photograph of the Peck, uh, Fort Peck Dam was the cover image on the very first issue of Life in 1936. Next slide, please. This is another one of our new traveling exhibitions. It's a photography exhibition that looks at the life and accomplishments of Billie Jean King, starting with her childhood and early tennis matches in um, uh, Long Beach, California, going through all of her Grand Slam championships, the Battle of the Sexes in the 1970s, and right up to the present. Next slide, please. The New York Historical Society has an outstanding collection of American paintings, and this is the newest of our traveling exhibitions from our American painting collection. It includes works by Albert Bierstadt, Thomas Cole, Asher B. Durand, Frederick Church, and many others. And next slide. Please, uh, this is another one of our new traveling exhibitions that's been extremely popular. It is an historical uh, overview of footwear, starting with the earliest shoes in the collection in the exhibition from the 1830s, going right up to the present. Next slide, please. And we have a lot more information on our website, and um, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Hankey. I'm the director of exhibits at the Cole Children's Museum, and I'm here to talk about our brand new travel exhibit, Nature Cat Backyard and Beyond. Next slide, please. Nature Cat is an Emmy nominated animated series shown on PBS that features a house cat named Fred. Once his family leaves for the day, Fred turns into Nature Cat, who goes out to explore the natural world with his friends. If you haven't heard about Nature Cat, you might have heard the voices as they are. Uh, the characters are voiced by Saturday Night Live comedians, uh, Taryn Killam, Kate McKinnon, Bobby Moynihan, uh, Keenan Thompson, and also actress Kate Micucci. Next slide, please. 
Kids can role play by wearing a vest of their favorite character as they explore the exhibit here. The exhibition builds on four main habitats that they all uh, are interchangeable with no specific layout here. The cave area shows the importance of exploring safely. It has rare organisms like a eyeless salamander and some uh, bioluminous and glowworms. Uh, the marsh area reinforces the concept of how to be a good environmental steward as you help clean up trash props and then sort them into garbage or recycling bins. And if, you, if you're familiar with kids exhibits, many times uh, things are spread out all over the place. This is a nice little area because it encourages kids to uh, pick things up and put them away. Uh, we have a full water slide here that helps develop gross motor skills and then the ever challenging nine panel sliding puzzle. Next slide, please. Uh, there's an area here about forest biodiversity and in here features uh, Hal the dogs, his dog house. And inside the dog house, it talks about uh, thunderstorm safety. And there's an interactive in here that basically is a, a general tool that kids can use to uh, see lightning and hear thunder and use that as a, as a guide for about uh, to gauge how far away a storm is. Um, there's also a backyard area here for Daisy and her uh, vegetables and flowers and gardens. And the nice thing about this is it, it talks about how you don't need a lot of space to grow a garden. And it really focuses on how you can create um, flowers and gardens out of like boots and center blocks and tires. So a lot of repurposed materials. Next slide, please. Uh, we have a costume character that's available through rent through WTTW. Next slide, please. And if you have any information uh, that you'd like more, you can visit our web website uh, or contact me directly. I want to thank you, uh, TEN and ILE, for this opportunity. Stay safe, everybody. Hi, I'm Margaret Kia with MidAmerica Arts Alliance in Kansas City. Uh, we're home to Exhibits USA and NEH on the Road. So at any given time, we have about 40 exhibitions that are either on the road or in marketing. So please visit our websites. We have an array of exhibitions um, in art and humanities topics. And we really specialize in serving the small to mid-sized institution. Next slide. So I wanna talk about just a few of our exhibitions that we've announced recently. One of which is I'm a Man, Civil Rights Photographs in the American South, 1960 to 1970. Um, this is curated by the great American Southern historian, William Ferris from the University <clears throat> of North Carolina. Uh, so uh, certainly please check this exhibition out because it has uh, you know, themes that are um, certainly important at this moment and um, resonate in so many ways. If you see on our slide in region costs, since we are a regional organization that serves the states from Nebraska to Texas, those states nicely get an additional discount. But you'll also see our prices are quite low because we use funding that we receive from both the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities to keep our costs low to um, allow for access for great exhibitions across the country. Next slide, please. Walking in at Artica, it's an exhibition of photographs by Helen Glazer, who lived in Antarctica and um, took these photographs while she was out, uh, you know, surveying the sea in that part of the world. Um, so it, it's photographs along with a few sculptures that were created based off those images and um, you know, taps into ideas of the environment and climate change and is perfect for institutions exploring those themes. Next slide. Uh, resilience, a sensei sense of legacy uh, is really a, a beautiful exhibition of works of contemporary art by eight Japanese American artists. Um, here's an, a painting by Roger Shimomura. Um, and it talks about, you know, the legacy of the executive order <coughs> in, um, in what has that era of American history. Next slide. Transcendental Concord, a uh, series of photographs by Lisa McCarty uh, in and around Concord, Massachusetts, uh, the area where many of the transcendentalists lived from um, the Alcotts to uh, Emerson to, um, you know, 
all the uh, Thoreau, um, and they're definitely dreamy and ethereal and um, great for an institution wanting to, you know, look at an uh, era of philosophy or literature in American history. Next slide. And this is our next exhibition that we're going to launch within uh, NEH on the Road, World War I America. We've drawn from the Minnesota History Society or Center. And um, we, through this program, we take a very large exhibition and scale it down to about anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 square feet. And since we have funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities, you'll see it only cost an institution $1,000 to host and book. Um, they pick up in, in ship as well. They pick up the rest of the expense with the idea they really want some small humanities-based institutions to have access to great cultural uh, exhibitions. So look us up at NEH on the Road or Exhibits USA, EUSA, and we'll uh, see you at, at AEM next year. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, thanks Cynthia, thanks Mac especially. Uh, it's been a pleasure to, uh, to be able to present a new and exciting project to you today on behalf of Nomad and our project partners at Ingenium in Canada. Uh, next slide. This does seem to be a very appropriate time to be looking at how much there is to connect us on the planet uh, right now and how in many ways we've lost our connection with the rhythms and voices of the natural world, uh, both here on Earth and also out in the night sky. This exhibition looks at how many generations of indigenous people from across the world have looked to the stars for meaning and for comfort and guidance and how we all might learn from that wisdom and tradition. Next slide. The exhibition is being developed by an international team of indigenous knowledge keepers who together hold an extraordinary treasury of uh, indigenous star knowledge. This knowledge is being brought together in one place for the first time, very uniquely and vitally. The voice of the exhibition is, is their voice. Next slide, please. The exhibition is designed and laid out according to indigenous design principles, which are illustrated here. The medicine wheel, iconography that you can see, arranges cardinal points in seven directions, each of which will be assigned a thematic section in the exhibition and each section will then be brought to life through a large-scale projection, immersive theatre, sound and light, and feature some extraordinary object loans from international partners. Next slide, please. The exhibition will be touring from late 2022, so plenty of time to, to plan out of this situation we're in, following its launch at Ingenium in Ottawa earlier that year. So do reach out to myself or to Julie Leclerc, um, whose details are here, if you'd like to chat to us more. We'll be, we're just finalizing a full, fully detailed book um, illustrating the exhibition and the collections, and uh, we're happy to share that with anybody from June. So do get in touch. Thanks very much. Hi, everybody. Good morning from St. Paul, Minnesota, here at the train station, the Union Depot. Um, so great to see all of you again, and I'm so excited to see so many new faces and projects. Um, I also want to commend um, Cynthia and Debbie and Justine and, and Mac, of course, for pulling this all together. It's not easy. I also want to thank um, all of the people who are behind the scenes um, and faces that we can't see. I understand that it's the best attended roundtable to date. Um, something like 400 people are watching. So, hi everybody. Um, art, science, history, popular culture, and children's museums. Um, I have to also thank Jeffrey Curley and Liza Reich Rawson for dropping out so that I could talk for them. Um, you know that I love uh, to talk, but I like to talk with people in the room. So, I am uh, here with Maggie, um, who's helping me on some of the new exhibitions that went into the paralysis. And so some of the new exhibitions that EDG has, um, next slide, please. <laughs> there are a lot of exhibitions, as you know, that we represent from some of the most esteemed exhibition developers, designers, and content leads around the world. Um, behind me, and not on the screen today, are Liza Rawson from Liberty Science Center, Jeffrey M. Curley from Jeffrey M. Curley and Associates, 
Troy Carlson, who of course you met. Um, Raphael Ramish from Belgium is on the line. Barbara from Civita in Rome. Amir Shore, the talented artist from Matatak Art and Science Museum in Israel. And the last, latest partner from the University of Chicago, Paul Serena, our uh, leading uh, paleontologist, and Kelly Peck from Barrett Barrera Projects. So I want to thank them for all uh, being behind us today, bringing on um, these fabulous exhibitions that we're representing, that we are looking for solutions currently on how to make uh, what we've been working on for two decades, hands-on, minds-on, fully interactive exhibitions, um, 100 degrees the other direction. So that's what we've been working on for the last two months with all of you, our beloved clients, is what does the world look like when you reopen your doors? So I will say, besides the seven new exhibitions that you will see in the link on this slide, I don't have the time, obviously, to go through all of those seven exhibitions. Um, so I encourage you to look at the um, slides, look at the um, box.net file that we have. There's some fabulous um, creative materials in there. We're just a phone call away. Um, but I also want to say, take the time, everybody, to really think about mitigating your risk, mitigating your expenses over the next year. I want to thank everybody who's been so wonderful to work uh, with in the 19 museums that are hosting one of our exhibitions. You really should be holding on to those as long as you can so that you can work through what the new tomorrow will be. Um, we don't need to be in a rush. Uh, yes, we're all financially impacted, but those who are impacted the, the greatest are those that are on this call that have been furloughed and are waiting for the doors to reopen. So I just say be patient, be flexible. We're all in this together. Um, and now I'm gonna share with you a very exciting opportunity how to make your institution some money while you're in this paralysis. Uh, next slide, please, Cynthia. Okay, so here is the portfolio. Um, there are seven new exhibitions amongst the portfolio of 30 plus exhibitions for art, science, history, and popular cult culture. Again, we represent 12 countries right now and amazing, amazing content. I can't thank you all enough. Uh, next slide. So Culture Nut. Uh, this is what we've been very, very busy with over the last year. Many of you, thank you, have already used Culture Nut to sell off your um, exhibitions that are now um, finished touring. You have sold off elements of your exhibitions that were retired for whatever reason, and then all sorts of elements. So thank you, everybody who's uh, taken the pledge to stop the criminal activity we've all been engaging in, which is dumping. Um, we're all guilty of it. Let's not dump anymore. Let's, uh, let's upcycle and recycle. Check out culturenut.com. This is going to be the game changer for the cultural world. I think over a thousand um, museums have inquired, want to participate. We also recognize it's a big, 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 big job some of, some of you have. We have a client in London with five facilities that our team will be um, embedding in for uh, a number of weeks to help them come up with, are they keeping it? Are they upcycling, upcycling it? Are they recycling and selling? So now is the opportunity during this quiet time to evaluate what you have, uh, place it on Culture Nut and make some money from it. Okay, next slide. There we are. So you can reach Exhibits Development or Culture Nut at the following address. Again, I encourage you to view the portfolio so that you can see all the new exhibitions from the University of Chicago, Fossil Lab, our new costume exhibitions. We have three of them, Digital Me from Israel, Dragons from Stage 9, and of course, Worst Case Scenario from Jeffrey M. Curley and the Franklin Institute. Great to see you all and stay tuned. We're gonna throw a party next week, a virtual AAM party. I know many of you have already reached out. We've done a lot of Zooms and happy hours, but we are going to throw a party with prizes and games. So look forward to seeing you all next week. All right, we're up for Carrie here. Are you there, Carrie? I'm here. That was Great. such an unfortunate event. So thanks for keeping me on board and um, yeah, here we are again. We can start with the second slide. So thanks, Carrie from Flying Fish. 
I just want to say that I'm humbled to see so many great projects and um, I'm so glad to be a part of such a great uh, a group of people. So I'll tell you about hockey first. Hockey is produced in partnership with Montreal Science Center. It features objects and interactives to demonstrate the science behind the sport. It includes equipment to show the progression and evolution in speed, skill, and safety on the ice. Experiences include a hockey science lab atop a simulated ice rink, a full-size Zamboni, and a goalie shutout interactive. The exhibit premieres in Montreal next spring. Next slide. Flying Fish is proud to be the international touring partner for the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. We're working with Smithsonian photographer Carolyn Russo to extend the exhibition tour of her photographic exhibition internationally. Next slide. I'm presenting two exhibitions by the Australian National Maritime Museum in Sydney. The first one is Challenging the Deep, traces James Cameron's lifelong pursuit of and achievements in deep ocean science, technology, and exploration, including his record-breaking dives in Deep Sea Challenger. The exhibition includes objects from expeditions, multimedia experiences, and interactivity. It's available for a US premiere as early as next fall. Next. Uh, this exhibition is already in the U.S. and we're eager for it to make its debut. This immersive underwater children's exhibition is complete with a large-scale submarine that visitors can walk in, climb on, and slide down. It's highly interactive with STEM content. The exhibition is ideal for children and families. Voyage to the Deep has an opening this fall, then spring 2022 and onward. Uh, that's all from me uh, for the most part, but please visit our website to see our entire portfolio and also get in touch if you uh, have a need for any operations support for your exhibitions. We would love to work with you and support your tours. Thank you very much and thanks everybody at TEN and ILE for, for putting this together. Awesome. Thank you so much, Carrie, and thank you so much to all of our presenters. Um, I just wanted to quickly acknowledge some of our familiar faces who are typically at the ILE Forum. Um, so we want to just quickly acknowledge our friends at the Shipping Monster um, who are there to help you out with both with shipping as well as any of your storage needs. Um, we also have our, our lovely friend, Ms. Cheryl Murray um, with Turnkey Education, um, who always participates. And then we also want to acknowledge our friends at Jeffrey M. Curley and Associates who um, gave up their presenting spot to make way for other presenters. And with that, uh, Debbie, if you have a, a moment just to quickly share um, where we're at with working groups and how folks can get involved um, with the Traveling Exhibit Network and what's on deck next. Absolutely. So thank you everybody. Uh, thanks to those who filled out the survey to tell us what types of activities, events, and webinars you guys would like. That's really helpful. And the 10 board is still digesting that and we will be um, coming out with some more items. Um, the registration closed for the three working groups. So one is the value of traveling exhibitions, which is really looking at um, defining the value and getting this information into the right uh, hands within people within our museums, advocacy, grant writing. Um, the second working group is about traveling exhibition interactives um, and how to handle that in our current uh, state as, as museums look to reopen and also into the future. Um, and then the third working group, which I think is on the next slide, Cynthia, will be traveling exhibition logistics. Um, and so we had a really healthy uh, registration for all three of these working groups. So I thank you all for um, anybody who, who did sign up. You're going to be hearing from us uh, probably at the end of the week with more information on next steps for each working group. If anybody didn't get to register and wants to or has any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Great. Thank you so much, Debbie. Um, and thank you again to all of our presenters and uh, all of you folks that are joining us from all over the world. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate seeing your lovely faces and hearing about what you have on the horizon for your projects. Um, thank you so, so much, uh, Mac, uh, for co-hosting this with us. We really appreciate you and all the work that you do for traveling exhibits. Um, I do just want to quickly plug, uh, for those of you who typically do attend Excite, 
Um, we are looking at doing a similar forum um, for exhibitions that are touring in Europe. So if it is something that you are interested in participating in, um, please uh, shoot me an email and I am more than happy to make sure that you are on that email list um, so that you can participate. Uh, thank you so, so much. Um, all of the, the participants and our participant list and the slides as well as this recording will be available through our Traveling Exhibit Network uh, LinkedIn group and, as well as on our YouTube page. Um, if you have any troubles, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, and I, I look forward to seeing you all in person hopefully very soon. So take care everyone and uh, thank you. Thanks so much, Cynthia. Thank you. Thanks so much, folks. Um, Bye. Maybe, maybe we'll see some folks at, uh, at, at Aztec in Pittsburgh if they're <laughs> at Aztec in Pittsburgh. I hope so. <laughs> This is like looking at the devolution. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, everybody. Um, I have to jump for another call, but I really appreciate all of your participation and help and uh, everything, either in participating or in moderating. <laughs> yes, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Mac, um, for helping pull us together. It was great. A lot of great feedback in the comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We're making thank progress. Everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.